Good morning all. This is Dr. S.G. Hindian Bros, Assistant Professor, Department of BCE, R&D Engineering College. Today we can discuss about small scale fading in wireless communication subject. So generally the fading uh, or small scale fading can be describing the rapid fluctuations of the amplitude phase of a radio signal over a short period of time or short period of travel distance. Uh, in this case, it is going to ignore the large scale path loss effects. The fading can be caused by the interference between two or more versions of the transmitted signal, which arrive at the receiver at slightly different times. In the diagram, you can see the rapid fluctuations of your received power over short distances. So it is expressed in terms of decibels and it is related to the root mean square value or the nothing but your variance. So it is showing the fluctuations over short durations as per the diagram. So the waves which is arriving at multiple times or more versions, we are calling it should be the multipath waves. And the, this multipath waves uh, will be combining at the receiver antenna to give you a resultant signal which vary in the amplitude as well as phase depending on the distribution of the intensity and the relative propagation time. So based on your amplitude as well as time of arrival of the multipath waves, your um, uh, fading will be different. So this term is called as multipath propagation. So there are three more important effects of the multipath propagation happens. One is the rapid changes in your signal strength over a small distance. This is due to the reflection. And the second one is random frequency modulation due to varying Doppler shift on the different multipath signal. And the third one, we have called the time dispersion, it is also called as echoes caused by multipath propagation delays. So all the cases will be occurring in one day due to the, in the urban areas because uh, the height of the mobile antennas are, are well below the height of the surrounding structure. So there is no single line of sight path at the, to the base station. So even when a line of sight exists, multipath still occurs due to reflections from the ground and the surrounding structure. Similarly, uh, it can be happened due to the scattering as well as the diffraction effects that is encountered in the environment. So if objects in the radio channel are static and, the, and motion is considered to be only due to that mobile, then fading is purely a spatial phenomena. It is not at all depending on the mobility. So the receiver moving at high speed can cause through several fades in a several period of time that, uh, that we know. So at that time only the rapid changes in the signal strength will be occurring. So what are the major factors which influence the small scale fading are? First one is multipath propagation. The presence of reflecting objects and scatters in the channel creates a constantly changing environment which will be changing the amplitude, phase, and time. So the effect results in multiple versions of transmit signal to arrive at the receiver. The multiple propagation often lengthens the time required for the signal to reach the receiver. The second one should be the speed of the mobile. The relative motion between the base station and the mobile results in random frequency modulation due to the Doppler shift. So the Doppler shift will be positive or negative depending on whether the mobile receiver is moving towards or away from the base station. Third one is speed of surrounding objects. So if objects in the radio channel are in movement, they induce the time varying Doppler shift on the multipath waves. If the surrounding objects uh, can be ignored, we are ignoring these things, but uh, if the surrounding objects move at a greater rate than the mobile, then this effect is dominant at the small scale fading. Otherwise, the motion of the surrounding objects may be ignored. So, the fourth one is transmission bandwidth of the signal. If the band transmitted radio signal bandwidth is greater than the bandwidth of the multipath channel, the received signal will be distorted. But the received signal strength will not fade much over a local area. So, the bandwidth of the channel can be the coherence bandwidth, which is related to the specific source. So, the transmission bandwidth is related to the coherence bandwidth. If the coherence bandwidth uh, is uh, uh, higher, then the, the transmitter signal has a narrow bandwidth as compared to the channel. So the amplitude of the signal will change rapidly, but the signal will not be distorted in time. So these are the various effects which are leading to the uh, 
uh, small scale feeding. The major thing that, that is that depending on the Doppler shift, the second one should be the considered. So we can discuss something what is about the Doppler shift. So the Doppler shift uh, is nothing but the shift in your transmitter signal frequency or the received signal frequency due to the movement. That is considered to be the Doppler shift. So we are going to consider a mobile moving at a velocity V along the, the pause segment having a length T between the points X and Y. The mobile receives signals from the remote source yes. So we are going to assume that we are going to tra transmit the D should be very small and the distance S should be very remote. That is very, very larger compared to the distance. And it should be S, S and XY is almost parallel. Then only we can derive the formula for the Doppler shift. Okay, so these are the two assumptions which has to be considered. One is D is small and the S is, should be very remote or very further distance. So the difference in path length traveled by the wave from the source S to the mobile is given by del L is equal to T into cos theta. That is nothing but the path difference. Applying the Pythagoras theorem, we can get del L is equal to D cos theta. So what is D cos theta? D is nothing but distance. D, uh, it can be related to distance. Velocity is distance by time. So we can take it as it is gamma. Velocity is represented as gamma means d is equal to gamma into del t. So substitute that value gamma into del t cos theta. Then we can apply this to the phase difference. That is the, the phase change. What is the phase change? Is due to the difference in path length. So what is the formula for path the, the phase difference? It is path difference into 2 pi by lambda. So 2 pi by lambda into del l. So, uh, del L is the path difference, the product of path difference and the 2 pi by lambda, that is the path length. So, 2 pi by lambda into del L will give the phase difference. So, substitute the above equation, uh, del L comma del T cos theta. So, we can apply 2 pi by lambda, a yeah, 1 by 2 pi as uh, 1 by 2 pi lambda. So, Fd is equal to 1 by 2 pi, the 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled out. So, gamma del T by, by cos theta. So, the del value also gets cancelled out. So, gamma cos theta by del. So, this apparent change in frequency or of Doppler shift uh, relates only to the velocity as well as the angle direction of arrival of the wave and the wavelength. It is irrespective of the distance. So, this is how uh, we can say, derive the Doppler shift. And if the mobile is moving towards the direction of arrival of the wave, the Doppler shift is positive. As shown in the diagram, it will be having a larger, a smaller difference. And if the mobile is moving away from the direction of the arrival of the wave, the Doppler shift is negative. So this is about the small scale fading. So we have discussed what is small scale fading, what are the factors influencing the small scale fading, and what, what is the Doppler shift and its expressions. Thank you.